Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah. It is Tuesday. I just looked at uh, the little app on my computer telling me the we- that the weather app on my computer toolbar, and it says it's 67 degrees currently here today. That is crazy. So for all of you who are in snow and ice and slush and whatever else it is, I apologize. This is crazy for January. I mean, it's actually fairly typical for here for January, but no matter how long I've lived here, it still feels crazy to me. So anyway, I only bring that up because I just glanced down at the toolbar at the bottom of my computer and went, whoa, 67 degrees. That's, um, well, I already said crazy, but still crazy. Anyway, happy Tuesday. I hope you had a great weekend. Hope you, you know, did whatever it is that helped you feel refreshed and restored. I am here with another author interview for you today. Today I am interviewing Annette Palmer about her book, Trees, God's Hint to Humanity. And this is a a fun interview because it's one of those that, you know, often I get my, my authors through publicists and through various means. This author came to me because she is the friend of a friend of my husband's. So uh, she is the friend of someone that my husband used to work with when he still lived in Ohio. He is from Ohio. And so Annette wrote a book. Uh, Her friend knew about the book. She knew that uh, her friend's wife had a podcast and the rest is history. So here we have um, Annette on the podcast. And again, her book is called Trees, God's Hint to Humanity. Let me give you the um, back, the description from the back of that book. If there wasn't a floor where you're sitting or standing, what would be there? Probably a tree. Have you looked around lately? Trees are everywhere. Why? Are trees possibly a hint from God to humanity? Annette Palmer explains why she believes they are. Bef- explore the landscape from a train's window. Reminisce about your past Christmases, your last walk in the woods, your last drive down the freeway. Fill your thoughts with how amazing nature is. Connect with God like never before through the largest living creatures on earth, trees. That is um, the description, as I said, of Annette Palmer's book, Trees, God's Hint to Humanity. It is uh, about her experiences or her experience Well, she's going to tell the story, (laughs) but she had an experience that got her thinking about trees in relationship to God, got her thinking about what maybe God might be telling us through trees. And really, when you think about it, trees are everywhere. She was having experience on a train. But when you read through that, you say, you know, think about driving down the freeway. How often are you just driving past depending on where you live, trees, trees, trees. I grew up in Montana. Trees, of course, are everywhere. But even where I live here in uh, Northern California, the city that I live in has done an amazing job of the green spaces in the concrete jungle in which I live. But when you drive around, you see mostly trees everywhere. You don't see as much, um, as many buildings, as much... um, I can't think of the word, I just blanked on a word, but it it feels less like a large sprawling urban area and and more park-like when you drive around my my current town. So I appreciate that. And and that gives us all an opportunity to pause and think about trees in maybe a way that we have not thought about them before. So let's go ahead and turn now to the interview. Again, the author is Annette Palmer, and the title of the book is Trees, God's Hint to Humanity. Hi, Annette. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. 
we are um, here to talk about your new book. Uh, it's called Trees, God's Hint to Humanity, but with a question mark. Um, so before we get to the book, though, if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about yourself so my listeners can get to know you, that would be wonderful. I thank you. I'd love to. I am from Brunswick, Ohio, which is a suburb of Cleveland. I've lived here. For- Sorry about I've that. Lived- Go ahead. I've lived-, I've lived in Brunswick, Ohio for about, oh, 44 years. I married my husband, a guy from here. I'm originally from Encino, California, and uh, I had to get used to the snow, but now I like it a lot. And uh, my husband's name is Bob. Uh, we have one a son and I am a music teacher and a professional singer. I love to cook. I love to teach Bible to Sunday school kids and adults. And I love to date my husband. Those are some facts about me. (laughs) All right. Well, thank you for that. You and my husband kind of switched places because he's from the Cleveland area, but now he lives in California, although Northern California. So, wow. Amazing. Yeah. You got the snow and he doesn't leave the house if it's under 50 degrees. <laughs> That's what he jokes about anyway. Oh yeah, I hear you. So right. let's talk about the book. Again, it's called Trees, God's Hint. Um, excuse me, I cannot talk today. God's Hint Humanity. Can you um, give an overview of the story? Uh, right, the well, I do. And I'm glad you mentioned the question mark earlier because it is truly a question that I can't wait to ask later. Uh, when I when I enter the after the pearly gates, I'm going to ask the Lord, did I did I understand this correctly? Because I wrote a whole book on a theory. It wasn't anything God said or anything like that. And I not kind of the girl that God talks to me or anything like that. But one day I was out in nature in an Alaskan cruise and I looked around and I went, wow, something's up with all these trees and all this foliage. And when I got home, I was so obsessed with what I had thought. I told my husband, I said, I just want to write a book about this. And he said, go ahead. And I said, yeah, so let's do it together. And so I, after speaking many, many times about my theory, I finally put a book together and it was finally released last year. It was a big procrastination because I'm a singer. I'm not a writer. I, I'm not, I don't have much interest in publications or publishing. I just... But this theory was so profound that I wanted to share it with as many people as I could. So that's why I'm here today. And that's why I've gotten gotten it published. Yeah. And oh, yeah, it's it's an interesting time to have it published. You know, everything that's been going on the last couple of years with the world and the pandemic. So um, bless you for for doing that in the middle of all of the of the, the COVID stuff. Thank you. Um, well, I did some research on trees. And if, if you want to know what that was, I have some really big wows to tell you, Sarah. Are okay. you ready for them? I, I am. But let's before we get to the wows. Let's, um, so can you share your inspiration that 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 um, trip you were on the Alaskan cruise, but then you were on a train. And so share a little bit of that inspiration. For sure. The theory. Oh, sure. I was uh, going for an excursion in Alaska with my husband. We had a big, big celebration out there for my in-laws 50th anniversary. And we all took separate excursions. And the one I took was a salmon farm because if anybody knows me, they know I like to eat. And so we got to study how salmon spawned and then afterwards have a salmon dinner. So I thought, oh, that sounds really good. So we signed up for it. But when we went to do it, it, they said it was sold out. Well, we were a little bit late getting there. And what I found out was that every excursion was sold out except for one excursion, Sarah. And it was a five hour train ride to the Klondike. And I didn't even know what a Klondike was. I thought it was an ice cream bar, you know, and uh, later on, I found out it was a famous gold mine, but we, I'm not the type to sit still. I want to go, I'm a mover and shaker. I want to go do something out in Alaska, but the only thing left was that. So my in-laws were on that one, luckily, that was one good thing. So got on there and I just sat with my head against the window for five hours. We saw a bear, which was pretty cool. But after that, it was all foliage, Sarah. That's all there is in Alaska. There's tons and tons of foliage. And I just kept thinking, okay, God, it's just you and me on this train with Bob sitting next to me. And I just thought, you know, what is it with all this foliage? I mean, there's not even any, there's not a lot of uh, uh, people that are established there. There's not a big society or anything in Alaska. So why, what's all with all this, this foliage? And I thought, well, it must just be for him. 
because when he was creating, he just said, okay, I want all this pretty stuff, this pretty land. And when I noticed, what I noticed was that the train engineer who was kind of doubling as a tour guide here and there, he'd say something, you know, it was real muffled. It was for a lot of, you know, this kind of thing, kind of like Charlie Brown. But what I did notice he said, he said was that through all the storms and the ice and the turbulence of the weather in Alaska, that somehow the foliage just keeps growing upright and erect to the, you know, to the, to its heights. And I thought, well, that's interesting, God, if you made this all just for you, for your glory, it's interesting that it raises up to the heavens, you know, despite, despite issues, weather issues. So that was what inspired me at first. And then we ran into what seemed like millions and millions of trees. And then I thought, wait a minute, what about all the trees? And I looked at all the branches and I thought, oh my gosh, they're all raising their limbs. It's like a worship experience for the trees. And if he made them, he wanted them to worship them, the nature to worship them, him. So I just started thinking about it. And one thing led to another and to another, to another and to another. And then I had all these wow experiences. And uh, I'll tell you the big wow after I tell you the little ones, okay? Now that you know a little bit more about trees, God's hint to humanity, we're going to go ahead and take our first break. When we come back, Annette will be talking about some of the research that she did in writing this book. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. MC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with Annette Palmer about her book, Trees, God's Hint to Humanity. Let's return to that interview. Okay. So um, you mentioned that you got some of those wows from the research. So talk a little bit about the research and, and the yes. wows that came from it. Yeah. Then I'll tell you about the wow on the train. Uh, what I did was when I got home, I started looking up information about trees, both in the internet encyclopedias and also just from library and that. And I found out that, ready for this, there, the first wow is that there's three trillion trees on the earth. That is a three followed by 12 zeros, <laughs> yep. which is more than, listen to this, it's more than the number of the stars in the Milky Way and more than the number of cells in a human brain. That's how many trees there are. Hmm. Wow. And if the... If it's if that sum is accurate, like the scientists think it is, then the planet boasts of about 420 trees per every living person. So that's the first wow. I couldn't believe how many there were. They're everywhere, Sarah. I mean, if you look out, they're everywhere, whether they're transplanted yep. or natural. And in, in Ohio, they're boy, you fly over the state and it looks like a big rug, you know. Okay, the second wow is that. I found out once I got home that this is astounding. Trees are mentioned more than anything else in the Bible besides God and people. Can you believe that? Okay. They're mentioned from the first page of Genesis, first Psalm, book of the New, first book of the New Testament, the last page of Revelation. It goes on and on. There, it, there's a tree associated with every major event in the Bible, like the fall of man, the flood, the overthrow of Pharaoh, just to name just a few, because there's lots more in the book. 
And so that was my second wow when I found out the trees were mentioned more than anything else in the Bible. And that came off the internet of the encyclopedia of the internet. And then the third wow, but not the last, because the Bible's full of, I mean, the book is full of them, that every major character in the Bible is associated with the tree. And some examples are Noah received the olive branch. Abraham sat under the oaks of Mamre. That's Genesis. Both of those are Genesis. And then in Exodus, Moses stood in front of a burning bush. And then, you know, that's just a few from the Old Testament. Now, New Testament, a few were in Mark 8, verse 24, where uh, Jesus put the salve on the blind man's eyes. He started seeing and he said, oh, my gosh, all these people look like a bunch of trees walking around. <laughs> so that was mentioned there. And then Zacchaeus, of course, climbed the sycamore tree in Luke 19. And the disciples gathered on the Mount of Olives, uh, Luke 22. So I think that, and I'm through my book, I say, if you're convinced like I am, trees are probably the biggest hint on earth from God to humanity and a most powerful invitation to know him. Here's now back, if you're ready, Sarah, now for the biggest, biggest wow revelation. And it was from the train. Ready for that one or not? Uh, I am ready. Go ahead. The biggest wow revelation is before I left there and before I looked, looked all this stuff up. And I realized with my head still reeling on that train car windows, car window, I it dawned on me and I felt like a bee stung me, Sarah. I jumped. It was like, whoa, ding, 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 ding. It was a true Eureka moment. And I realized something. And, and that was this by using a tree. God made his biggest provision for mankind. He used a tree. Jesus was put to death on a cross made from a tree. And so I thought, were all these trees set everywhere around the earth as a hint to humanity? And the more I traveled into Alaska, the more thousands and millions of trees I saw. And I couldn't be, help but be obsessed by the fact that they were all praising God. And they were the highest thing. They're the biggest thing on earth I, that's alive. I looked that up too, Sarah. And the, you know, whales are like uh, about 20, 25 feet max. Uh, giraffes are 18 feet tall. Anything, trees, everything, everything pales compared to a tree that's alive. And, and not to mention, they give us oxygen. The book says a million things. They give us oxygen to breathe, to stay alive. I mean, they're full of life. They give us shelter for our homes. You know, wood is just amazing. It's, it's everywhere. We're probably sitting on wood somehow on our, you know, our, our, our uh, seats. And then one day I went for a walk with my girlfriend when I got home and she says, oh my gosh, you're right. She says, Annette, the manger was made from wood. <laughs> they carried the savior. You know, and, and then we said, oh, my gosh, the Bible's made from wood. <laughs> the Ark of the Covenant, um, Moses's rod. I mean, everything, the, the Ark, everything was a saving. Everything from wood is a saving element. It's a saving. It's a, wood is a saving element at all times with everything. Gives life to, to animals. You know, gives shelter to animals. It just goes on and on. And then there's a part in the book where you see crosses everywhere. You know, you see crosses on uniforms for medical and Red Cross, and there's just so much with crosses and trees and wood. So I'll, I'll take a little, you know, I, I want you to talk now, Sarah, because I know I'm really hogging this conversation. No, that, 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 <laughs> it's your conversation to hog. We're here to talk about your books. So. Oh, thank you. um, that's, that's just that's, in case you had any questions uh, yeah. in between, you know. But. No, thank you. Um, I was just, I was going to say, so. Um, what, when people, when people read your book, what do you hope that they will take away from it? The biggest takeaway is that I, I hope that they are made to see, I hope that they are aware of trees like they've never been aware before. I hope that they notice them more than ever because they're huge and they're everywhere. I told my husband when we were driving down the freeway one day, I said, God's got the biggest billboard system 
in the world because you're driving down the freeway and it's tree, 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 I mean, and it's all wood, you know, and I'm not sure when I looked in the Bible, there wasn't a lot about a tree being a symbol or a, a hint or a kind of an object of, of representation. It doesn't say that, it does say that Christ died on a tree in a few places, but it depends on the translation and that. But I just hope that they're more, they see trees in a whole new way. And the specific way is that they see that Christ saved them on one of them. So that's my biggest takeaway, Sarah. Mm -hmm. and, um, Time for our second break of the podcast. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be back with more from Annette Palmer. Pets bring such joy to our lives, and the GSMC Pets Podcast is here to share in that joy. We'll tell stories of pets finding their forever homes, acting in unexpected ways, being helpful, or just being silly. Whether you love dogs, cats, llamas, reptiles, fish, or you've never met an animal you didn't like, the GSMC Pets Podcast is for you. Today we are talking about trees, lots and lots of trees, and um, uh, trees as related to potentially how we see God, how God sees us, how God sees the world. So um, if you've been, key actually, you know what, we're about to talk about the number, uh, how, ma how many times we say the word trees, and I wonder if you have been keeping track. I should have, I should have kept a running tally because we've been talking a lot about trees, and I am curious now many times we've mentioned that and I don't see this in any way negative it's just one of those ways that my brain works where I start thinking huh I wonder how many times that word has come up so let's go ahead and return now to the interview uh, there's a there's a part in the book after you come home from the cruise and you're talking to someone at your church and he's like yeah maybe <laughs> oh, so yeah. how how has has the reception been um and and is your family think that you use the word tree too much now in your life? <laughs> good question. Good question. That's such a good question. I have to tell you that they don't because I don't overdo it with the family. Uh, I, the only time I really talk about this is I was so excited when the book came out and, and I made many, many presentations about this in Toastmasters and also to the church groups and that. And I still do because I do book signings with this and all. So, you know, it, I, I, I think that it's taken well. I think most people think that it's wow. It's a wow moment for them. That's just exactly what I would pray for. I don't know if God's got a, if God is God and he created the earth, there's a good chance that this theory is right because they're so huge. And, you know, people can drive through them in California in the redwoods, you know that. They're, and, and, and I'm looking at one right now. It's probably about 50 feet high. And there's about six of them in view out this window. They're all naked, of course, because winter brings the leaves down from the fall. I should say the fall brings the leaves down. And then winter, they just stand stark. And there's a whole part of my book that talks about the seasons and why I also think that deciduous trees that change colors and change with the seasons. I have another theory. I don't have a lot of theories, but this is the second theory. And the second theory is that the deciduous seasons seem to parallel a Christian's life. For instance, in the fall, when you, they drop their leaves, it's kind of like you drop your sins. You, you kind of change your, your color, so to speak. And uh, when you first become a Christian, and then when in the, you're in the winter, you kind of stand surrendered and you're all naked with nothing. You're not holding on to anything. You're just waiting for the hope of light. And the Bible says Christ is the light in John one. And then and spring comes, you turn into this gorgeous human being. It's like a beautiful creature, a new creation, which is the first Corinthians seven, nine, oh, I forget, nine, 11, but it's, you, you turn in this big, create beautiful creation and, and people can 
view you for, for, for blocks and smell this fragrance of you for blocks away. And you become this, this new reborn person. And then in the summertime, you know, those blossoms don't stay forever. They drop off and then all of a sudden the tree goes to work. It's got leaves that bear, the branches bear fruit and they feed people and they house animals and they come down for lumber and they're used in the summertime, just like a Christian, once they're mature after their new creation, they start working for the church. They start working for the, the heavens, for the kingdom. So I, I didn't come up with that theory. A friend of mine, Cindy Farini, who wrote the foreword, she, in one, one meeting we were at, I was presenting this and she said, you know, Annette, this is funny, Sarah. She says, you know, Annette, I have a thought about deciduous trees. And I said, what's that mean? <laughs> I said, I majored in music. I don't know what deciduous <laughs> means. And she says, it's the trees that change. And I said, oh, and I just stood there in awe at what she was telling me about the four seasons and the parallels. I thought, wow, that's amazing. So after that, every talk, I included the deciduous trees and I wrote the chapter about them. So, uh, and then I have a chapter in there about Christmas and Christmas trees. Because <laughs> that's, that's something different. It's funny that you mentioned deciduous versus, you know, like coniferous trees, because I grew up in Montana and we learned that in like third grade. <laughs> Um, just just gosh. funny the differences you know where you live and what yeah I grew up in California and there's not a lot of those you know yeah yeah but so um that that makes me laugh funny. Um, but then there's lots of words that I'm sure I don't know because I grew up in the wrong place so uh, okay, it's fun um I hear you so the the Christmas tree chapter I think you'd like it well I think you I know you read it but as far as the Christmas trees go there's something I said I didn't have any other theories, but I guess this is another little one. I, the, the deciduous tree, of course, wasn't my theory. But the Christmas trees, I started thinking, okay, God, well, the deciduous trees are, look like something else. But the Christmas trees aren't even the deciduous tree. Why are there so many in Alaska? Because there was lots of those evergreens. And why do we use them for Christmas trees? And I thought, well, there's a passage in Hebrews 13 that says, Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forever. I thought, well, maybe those trees represent Christ because they never change. So then I started thinking, well, then are people instinctively bringing them in their homes for Christmas since Christ was born then? And they top them with two things. I'm sure you are familiar with either an angel or a star. And both of those things in the New Testament pointed to the Savior. Both an angel told those the uh, shepherds and a star told the wise men. So, and then, you know, we put all kinds of presents underneath because what all Christ has done for us. And I just thought, wow, maybe there's a Bible verse there that it says it all. It's Ecclesiastes 311. It says, God put eternity in the hearts of men. And yet they don't really understand it, but he put eternity so I think that's why directors in Hollywood and producers and writers, they write stories about damsels in distress. There's always an enemy in there somehow, whether it's cancer or a bad guy. And then there's always a savior. And a lot of those guys don't even know God. And, but they're always, always, every movie you see, except for documentaries, say they have always that love story or that love, that saving story. And I think that that's that Ecclesiastes 311 verse that says God put eternity in the hearts of man, which leads the Christmas tree coming in for Christ's birth. So that's another whole thing in their chapter about Christmas trees. I have a confession in that um, we had, uh, well, we have multiple Christmas trees in our home each year. One has a star at the top, one has an angel at the top, but then the third one has a um, bumble from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer ah, ah, <laughs> as the topper. It. I know that there's some other toppers. I know there are. Um, but those are the popular ones. Right, no, you, no. And, and, you know. and, you know, two of That's our three cute. have those. But then I was like, oh, I wonder, I wonder where Bumble fits in this theory. <laughs> now, Sarah, do you have real ones or do you have artificial we trees? We have artificial trees. Okay, so do we out here. Mm -hmm. Mostly everybody has one. But you know as well as I do, when you find a pine tree and you that you could that you do buy and you bring it in your living room uh the scent of it is mm -hmm. is wonderful and everybody knows evergreen smells good and then i found out that the essential oil companies make evergreen scent to be a calming 
scent that you mm-hmm. buy for, for, for calming and also for energizing or healing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm thinking, wow, something's with the evergreen trees now. It must, and people bring them in for Christmas. It's like, wow. Listen to this. Christopher Radko, the author of The Heart of Christmas, wrote this. He says, with all due respect to Santa, the central icon of the season is the Christmas tree. I can't imagine the holidays without the magic of wonderfully decorated trees, each different, each special, like the, now here's a clincher, like the hearth or a dining table, a Christmas tree draws people to it and to one another. And then he goes on to say, our visceral, our visceral response, I love that word visceral because it's that inner nervous system, response to evergreens makes me wonder if they have magical properties we've long forgotten. The scent of spruce and fir trees not only connect us to the natural world, they actually cheer and invigorate us. No wonder the aromatherapists are using essential oils for evergreens and they're energizing and healing properties. And then I say, wow, it, even an aroma gives life and comfort from Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. Well, there's, you know, there's a lot of um, memory associated with scent and, and then, you know, that's memories of Christmas or, you know, time with family. It's yeah, that that's understandable. So true. So true. So yeah. Well, you've mentioned a couple of times that, you know, you're not a writer, you're a singer, you're a musician. Um, But if I'm remembering correctly, you said something in the book about potentially writing more. Is that, did I remember that right? Or is, you know, are you thinking about maybe writing anything else? Well, I think I mentioned in the book kind of silly, a silly thought. I just said something like, well, that's for the next book or something like that. Okay. I really, I hope this doesn't hurt my credibility, but I, I'd rather give speeches about it than write more about it. I think I've written enough about this theory but I have found a little bit more information. For instance, I don't think that in the book, the, um, oh yeah, it is in there. Yeah, I have all my statistics in there. Uh, every now and then somebody will say something and I'll think, oh, when I revise the book, I gotta put that in there. You know? But I can't, like for instance, there's a, there's a book out where they talk about trees talking to each other in the forest. Have you heard of that? Mm, Yes. Yeah. Everybody has. It's really popular now. Uh, And I, I, I looked it up in the, I didn't buy it. I want to buy it. I almost getting there, but it's amazing to me how all the roots and first of all, the roots sometimes are as as big as the tree because they have to be. And that's another thing I think God did is that he wants trees out there to stay as durable as they can. So he gives them these huge roots. And then I understand that the roots talk to each other underneath and they supply each other where there's need. And I thought, wow, that's another miracle. So things like that would be a good revision or update, but uh, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm up for doing some more writing. I, like I said, I, I'm, I'm a mover and a shaker and I'm not a sit still at the computer and keep writing person. So, but I'm glad this book's out. (laughs) out finally. As Paul says, everyone has gifts and we all need to use our gifts. As we take our final break of the podcast, I will say I don't often quote Paul, but you know, sometimes it's appropriate. So that's just a random comment for you. (laughs) Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch, whatever it may be. Visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play.
Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with author Annette Palmer. So, um, yeah. uh, so from your, your experience then, someone who never planned to write a book, um, do you have <laughs> advice for someone who's out there, maybe has had a similar experience and thinks, I could turn this into, you know, a devotional of some sort. Do you have advice for people like that? Thanks for asking. That's a great question. The first thing I'd say, there's two things. The first thing I'd say is get a really good editor, because even though you think you're the poet of the century or the writer of the century, somebody else can make it sound better. So get an editor. And if you don't like it, you can change it back. But I started with an editor that was someone in the neighborhood and uh, she made it, made some magical changes for me. And then the, the company, the publisher that I went through, Westbow Publishing, they edited some more. And you know, I thought I was all that until I read what all they did. And then I thought, wow. So as far as editing goes, don't just depend on yourself and get a publisher. Don't just, you know, go through something where you self publish because companies can really be an asset. The other thing I was going to say is this, I was told from an insider of the publishing world that the people who sell the most books market themselves. So, you know, the, the people who are hired by publishers to market, and I, I hope I don't offend anybody here, but they, they got a lot, they got families and they, you know, their book, your book is third, third hand to them. They're, it's not a vested interest like yours is. I mean, they're making a living, but it's a little bit, it's a little bit more vague when they market, when you market, it's coming from your heart into the phone when you're calling those people. Now, if you market a faith, if you write a faith-based book, <clears throat> it's super easy. If any authors are listening to me and they can contact me if they want, I can give you a voice, uh, an email address, but I can tell you how to market a faith-based book. It's the easiest thing in the world. And I'll give you some, some thoughts here. And that is that you call every church, you start with the churches around you and you just branch out like a big circle and you go further and further and further and further because speaking in person sells more books. I have to interrupt you in that because please. you just missed your metaphor. You said branch out like a circle. But no, it's, ah! no, it's a tree. <laughs> oh boy, that's right. I must be thinking along those lines. In my blood. <laughs> go ahead. So, but anyway, yeah, start with churches because in marketing and in selling books, public speaking is the number one seller. It, it just is. Now, I don't know about podcasts so much because I've only been on, I've been on two, but they were kind of little. Uh, you're just a big one. I hope everybody has some interest in this. And, and, and if, like I said, if you want information, uh, aspiring authors, let me know. But you call the churches all around town and you speak at all the churches. And then after that, if you want to call the radio stations, I have had not much luck with the local Christian stations. I, I got on there, but there was not a lot of marketing for me. There's not a lot of circulation. Um, the biggest circulation is public speaking. So that's what I would say. And I would say, if you have a thought and you want to author a book, I hope you go for it because you may have something that is really an eye opener to someone that, who needs to hear it. So. All right. Well, thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> it, it's a book podcast. So I, I always ask what people are reading when you take the time to read um, for yeah, yourself. Yeah. What do you, what, what genres and authors do you tend to, to read? Well, I love nonfiction because I want to know more and more and more every day. I just want to know more, more, especially about God and the Bible. I mostly do Bible study and with, with um, commentaries. That's what I do. I have a couple a week and I lead a few and uh, I love that mostly, but if I have to go to a secondary source, I go to authors that I really trust. Uh, anybody can say anything in a book and I, you got to be so careful not to be brainwashed in the wrong way. One of my favorite authors is John Eldridge. Uh, many of you have heard of him. He wrote Waking the Dead, The Sacred Romance, The Journey of Desire. The favorite book, my favorite book to read is called Epic. I read it nine times. There are 104 pages in this book. It goes super fast. It is by John Etheridge, John Eldridge. And I finally remembered the name of the title is Wild at Heart. He is the best-selling author of Wild at Heart. And then he wrote this little tiny book called Epic. And it says the story, the story God is telling and the role that is yours to play. 
he talks about in this book, Sarah, it is phenomenal. He talks about how God has made everything on earth. It's a theory, just a theory, but he has made everything on earth with a double meaning, something for the heavens, something. So in other words, I got that idea about the, the writers in Hollywood from this book. I got the, uh, that idea that, every, that the writers in Hollywood, whether they're atheists or believers, they're still writing about somebody who needs help, somebody who goes to the rescue and an enemy. And that came from this book. So everything in this book, he even talks about sunrises and sunsets being uh, a new, uh, the new life versus the sin life of darkness. And then in the morning, you know, the dawn and the, the light comes with the dawn. And every day that happens, 365 days a, a week, a year, so that we can remember that there is hope of light and pros prosperity in our future. We don't have to stay in the darkness. That's something that he theorized. But he says, for instance, every, uh, every, I'll just say this briefly. It says every, every story has a villain because yours does. And it says most people do not live as though the story has a, their story has a villain. And that makes life very confusing. See, so, oh, this is my favorite book. I love it. So besides the Bible, I read this and I read his wife's books. And John MacArthur is huge, huge, huge in my life. I read, I have almost all his books, including his, bi the Bible. He baptized me actually. And I have his Bible with his commentaries and he autographed it. So it was pretty cool. <laughs> Panorama City. All right. Thank you. By you. That. <laughs> <laughs> By um, you. And then uh, where can people find you a uh, website? If you're on any social media, how can people be yeah. in contact with you? It's my pleasure to tell you that people can contact me on an email. I'm going to give them an email that is not really, I have an email for my book, but I'm going to change it to a, a personal email. The email is voice teacher, just like it sounds at webtv.net. Remember it's .net, not dot, uh, dot com or dot org. Voice teacher at webtv.net. Interestingly enough, I teach voice lessons long distance. So if anybody needs that too, but that's how you can contact me about the book. So if you could just put book in the subject line, then I'll know it's from you. Uh, voice teacher at webtv.net. The other uh, thing is, if you'd like to go to my website, it is, uh, it is called trees, God's hint book.com trees god's hint book.com all right thank you for that um i appreciate you giving people means to get in touch with you if you have they have questions and then annette we've talked about uh, a lot of different things during our time together but is there anything that we haven't covered that you were hoping to touch on during mm -hmm. this interview i guess i'll just end on a <clears throat> a little funny story and it's it's in the book too and the story is that when I got back to Ohio I was really afraid to tell people my theory because I thought they'd laugh at me because it was way out there and nobody ever says this stuff and uh, I got back and told a trusted girlfriend that went well and that's all about chapter five by the way but then at the end of the book I, I say that you know I was at praise team I'm on of course a musician I'm on the praise band in the praise band at church and one day we were really tired and we were trying to get through the music and that. And I was walking out of the sanctuary from the stage and the drummer was walking with me. He says, Hey, Annette, how you doing? And I said, Oh, I'm okay. I'm kind of beat. And he says, really? How's the rest of your life? And I said, well, funny, you should ask. And I got real peppy. And I said, I just got back from Alaska, Anthony. And I said, I had such a cool idea. And I told him the theory about my trees. And he said, Annette, I got to be honest with you. Your theory is pretty cool, but it seems still at the same time a little far fetched. And I turned to him and I said, Anthony, someday when you and I go to heaven and we're sitting on a park bench made from a tree underneath the shade of a tree, listening to the birds above in the tree, God's going to walk right up to you, put his finger on your nose and say, Palmer got the hint. 
And then, and, and so that's kind of a funny story because I, you know, he was the only one who doubted it really that I've ever, ever talked to. And I said, someday in heaven, God's going to say Palmer got it. <laughs> so that's kind of how I'll end here, I believe. All right. Well, thank you so much. I want to thank you um, for taking the time to talk to me about your book. You're, um, you're so passionate about it and I, I really appreciate your time. Oh, thanks, Sarah. I really enjoyed it. Thanks. All right. So I'm going to stop recording and then I will. That was fun. Thank you once again to Annette for taking the time to talk to me about trees, God's hint to humanity. Um, some of you know that I also host the GSMC book, or, excuse me, this is the GSMC book review podcast, the GSMC Bible study podcast, and that I have, I have a past No, <laughs> that I, I went to seminary. And so I, I do host the Bible study podcast as well. Don't often talk about uh, that on the book review pod, uh, podcast, but it does come up occasionally. And so it's it was kind of fun to combine some of the different facets of my life with this particular interview. So thank you again to Annette. Uh, thank you again, as always, to you for joining me. I appreciate you so much. And I hope that you will join me for my next interview when I will be speaking with author Anthony Yanni. This is a memoir. It is called Centered, Autism, Basketball, and One Athlete's Dreams. Anthony is um, a national speaker. He speaks um, about autism, about his own journey with autism, about being the first um, NCAA basketball player possibly athlete or just basketball player. I don't remember. I apologize. Um, but uh, to be recognized as on the autism spectrum. And so he talks about his journey and how he went, um, how he had a dream of playing for Michigan State University, how he achieved that dream, how he now speaks nationally about his experiences. And so join me for that interview on the next episode. As always, if you're a fan of this podcast, please do leave a review, whether written or starred. Definitely helps us out. And if you're not doing so already, follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I would love to hear from you. What are you reading? What do you want to read? Who are your favorite authors? Uh, what books from interviews have you read? And what were your thoughts? Hit me up on social media. As always, I hope you're having a good week. And I hope that that week involves plenty of time to get yourself lost in a good book. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from Movie to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program